So chapter 29 is revealed to be alien and this is really one of the biggest license holders that behavior has worked with in Dead by Daylight. In today's video we're going to go over the possibilities of this chapter, discuss the information revealed, and explore the aftermath of the situation. Hey everyone at Schmuckles, don't mind my hair woke up. According to DBD News, the PTB for the alien chapter has started on database. The PTB for chapter 29 is either on August 8th or 9th, I'm not sure which. Dweet, a very reliable leaker, said that it was on August 9th a couple weeks ago, but at the end of the teaser, behavior said learn more on August 8th. So I'm leaning towards August 8th as the PTB, but I'm not 100% sure. DBD News, another reliable source of information, is saying that it's going to be on August 8th. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel if you like what you see here today. I'm also live right now on Twitch streaming Dead by Daylight. Link for that in the description below. I'm really excited to see what this new map looks like. This is the Nostromo main deck, and I kind of suspect that this map will have a similar kind of feeling to Hawkins National Laboratory with long hallways separating each room. If this map is too large, they'd have to adjust the surface area of the map to be playable in DBD. They'd probably keep some of the iconic locations playable though, like the kitchen where the facehugger burst from Kane's chest, and the med bay and hospital where the facehugger disappears. We also need two exit gates too, maybe there'll be escape pods. If the map's too large, they might close off some areas and have a few variants, kind of like what they did with Resident Evil. In a way, the Resident Evil map may have helped pave the way for a smooth release of this giant spaceship map. They could have learned from the whole Raccoon City map experience to have two different map variants ready for the PTB. This is Mother's Dwelling, which is the largest map in DBD. As you can see, it's 12,032 square meters. The new alien map could have multiple levels shrunk down to the DBD size with vertical elevation or the ability to use elevators. People are also wondering like what could the Xenomorph's power be? In the teaser the alien leaps towards the camera so people are wondering if that was a nod towards the alien's power or not. It could be like some sort of Demogorgon lunge ability. But based on what everyone is saying on my Discord and Twitch make sure to join my Discord if you want to be a part of these types of discussions. There are three main abilities that people are speculating. The first ability is for the Xenomorph to be able to climb up walls. There could be some balance issues around this power based on whichever map Xenomorph spawns on. If it's too strong or overpowered, Behavior could actually balance this by having a cooldown or having reduced movement speed of the Xenomorph when the Xenomorph is crawling on the wall. If this was the power, this should definitely come with a second ability that helps Xenomorph out in the open. Xenomorph needs to be able to also play well in open terrain, something like a stealth ability, movement speed, or agility, or a face hugger ability. That way, if Xeno spawns on a map without many platforms or walls to crawl on, it's still viable in an open terrain situation. The second possible power is the ability to teleport or use a vent system to traverse the map. It makes a lot of sense on a spaceship map, but Xeno's power must be usable on all maps. This type of power would mean that every single map that Xeno spawns in has a vent system that Xeno can use. It would kind of be like Demogorgon with the portals or Sadako with the TV screens. In this hypothetical situation, I don't know if the vents would be preset or if Xeno could actually place them throughout the map. The third ability that's being speculated is the use of acid spit to break pallets and possibly deal damage to survivors. Not sure how likely this power would be because it'd be pretty similar to the plague already. If you want to see the alien's killer potential in Dead by Daylight, make sure to click the title above. I did a video covering all of the alien's abilities throughout the movies. The reliable leaker Dweet tweeted this out the day of the reveal. Enter the suffocating silence of deep space on August 29th with the alien chapter for Dead by Daylight. Trapped within the walls of an overrun space station, you're not alone. Play as the Xenomorph or Ellen Ripley and board the USCSS Nostromo to discover the horrors beyond. Now, Ellen Ripley would be the obvious survivor for this chapter, but she wasn't actually revealed in Behavior's official teaser. So it seems like Dweet here is confirming that Ripley is coming with this chapter. People are wondering if Ripley is going to come in with stealth perks to help survivors hide from killers. And I'm actually not sure if it's confirmed that there's just one survivor in this chapter. Even though the roadmap says new survivor and not new survivor, the roadmap for the Resident Evil Part 2 chapter also said new survivor and they brought in two survivors with a lot of legendary skins. The Alien franchise has a lot of options for second survivors as well as legendary skins. All of this made me wonder if they're going to have Sigourney Weaver's likeness for this character and if Weaver herself would actually voice the character. Back in 2006 when Sega acquired the license for video games, Sega was in talks with Sigourney Weavers to lend her likeness and voice talents to their games. We haven't finalized anything at this point but everything is on the table said Rod Leitner, Vice President of Business Development at Sega. It's important for everyone to understand the difference here. We're talking about licensing to the next level with this franchise. Behavior has gone to other voice talents other than the original actor or actress to voice DBD characters, like Albert Wesker, for example. But they've also used original actors or actresses too, like Doug Bradley for Pinhead. I was wondering if the writer strike would somehow cause Sigourney Weaver to not be able to lend her voice for DBD, but it seems like the writer strike started on May 2nd and the actors joined the strike at midnight on July 14th, which would be way after this chapter was already fully completed. Sigourney Weaver has even found a way to be a part of 
never greenlit any project through A24, since A24 is actually not a part of the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. There's a couple really interesting things about this chapter being confirmed as Alien. Firstly, the connection between Eric Pope and John T. Drake that we've been talking about for months was completely real and was happening behind the scenes. The day of the Alien teaser reveal, the Vice President for Games and Licensing at 20th Century Studios, John T. Drake, said there was a YouTuber speculating that this was coming because Mr. Pope and I are friends. That's inaccurate. We did the deal because he and I are dire enemies and I want to murder him as the Xenomorph. So psyched to be working with DBD, Lucasfilm, and the team. Eric responded and they both knew that I would see this tweet, which is really funny to see. Interesting fact number two is that Ken Pedrora was liking DVD alien tweets for the seven year anniversary while 20th century and behavior were working on the chapter. I mean, that's incredible. So going forward with theories and speculations, we now know that behavior employees are very good at keeping secrets, but people from other companies might not be aware of how much we investigate. There is a cat seen in two shots in this teaser, so people are kind of speculating that this cat is going to be walking around the map. People think there's a very good chance that Jonesy will hiss at the killers. Kind of a more upgraded version of Maurice. And it made me wonder if there's going to be a new DVD achievement, Pet the Cat, with a new cute animation. Look at what Death by Giggles said here. Never in a million years did I think my experience working with Disney and Lucasfilm would be relevant to the work that we did here on DVD, but here we are. This team has worked so, so hard on this one. Can't wait to experience this as a player from the sidelines. Someone asked her, will we have a new mechanic to pet the cat? And she responded, can't comment on anything as A, under NDA, and B, no longer at behavior, but rest assured y'all are in for a treat. Interesting fact number three is that months ago, I kept speculating that Eric Pope and John T. Drake were working together on an alien chapter for Dead by Daylight. I was thinking they brought Eric Pope in as the new community director at behavior, and he came to the team already connected to John T. Drake and Disney. I think it's very possible that Pope helped behavior land this license. I was posting videos about what I thought the next big license would be at DBD, and I kept mentioning these ideas. And Eric Pope actually responded to my speculation videos on Twitter. On August 22nd, 2022, he said, there's a DBD YouTuber that goes through my Twitter likes and tries to speculate what licenses the game is going to do next, and it's all very cherry-picked. For example, the guy glosses over 2,500 tweets and things like this SpongeBob picture. It's so interesting because despite the fact that Alien was an upcoming chapter that was in the works with behavior in 20th Century Studios, Pope acknowledged my theories and speculations, even though I was accurately predicting the Alien chapter. This would actually suggest that the fact that Pope acknowledged those Springtrap rumors based on his profile picture doesn't necessarily necessarily rule out the possibility for FNAF for chapter 30. While the reason for those speculations might not make sense, the fact that Pope acknowledged my alien theories when the alien chapter was in development suggests that he might still acknowledge Springtrap rumors even if that's what's planned for chapter 30. But right now everybody is talking about Predator for chapter 30 because 20th Century owns that property too. It's a little confusing because we know that chapter 30 is going to be a licensed paragraph chapter and it's not coming with a new survivor. So if chapter 30 is Predator, that would mean that there's no Dutch, no Arnold Schwarzenegger, and that's kind of strange because it was just an announced that Arnold lent his likeness into Fortnite for the character Terminator. So why wouldn't Behavior actually go forward with Arnold if everyone is down? So I just want to ask everyone, let me know in the comments below, how on board are you with chapter 30 actually being Predator? Would these two chapters at all be too similar? Would Disney and 20th Century want to test the performance of the Alien chapter before giving Behavior Predator? What are the chances that 20th Century actually went all in with Behavior on two separate contracts? On March 13, 2015, Mortal Kombat 10 released a combat pack. One week after this combat pack, Predator was revealed as the second DLC guest character. And later that year, Mortal Kombat saw Alien arrive on December 3rd, 2015 in Mortal Kombat Pack 2. So is history to repeat itself with 20th Century licensing their content back to back in third party games? The same thing happened with Fortnite 2. January 20th, 2021, Predator joins Fortnite in the Chapter 2 Season 5 Battle Pass. And then one month later, Aliens Ripley and Xenomorph and Jonesy joined Fortnite in February 26th, 2021. It seems like Predator has to be the front runner, especially based on 20th Century's history of licensing both parties back to to back in games. That leads us to a big, very scary question. If chapter 30 isn't Pennywise, would that mean that Pennywise is never coming to Dead by Daylight? Chapter 30 is the last chapter within Warner Bros.'s use it or lose it window. So if chapter 30 isn't Pennywise, then Behavior would need to go through Stephen King to get the license. I imagine that Stephen King would see a small company like Behavior taking care of a multi-billion dollar alien franchise. Would that change his mind on Pennywise if we don't have a Pennywise chapter lined up right now? Bringing in the alien license to Dead by Daylight could incentivize other big license holders like Pennywise because people will see that Dead by Daylight isn't just pulling in the small fry stuff. We do have some bigger licenses in the game already, but they're all from smaller movie companies. This collaboration with 20th Century and Disney is the biggest license holder behavior has ever worked with. It made me wonder, like, would this collaboration turn some heads over at Disney's competitor, Netflix? Would this huge deal with Disney pressure Netflix to get their IPs, like Stranger Things, into this game? Because Netflix will see that Disney has decided that adding Alien into Dead by Daylight is a good marketing decision, so that incentivize Netflix to change their stance. I think at the very least, it could kind of normalize the decision of major movie studios to license their content into Dead by Daylight. It's kind of like Fortnite's snowball effect with the 
these big collabs. Once one huge license is brought into the game, others may follow in suit. The announcement and success of the Alien crossover could serve as a powerful marketing tool for both the game and the IP holders. This could lead us to a new era where major movie studios and streaming platforms see Dead by Daylight as an attractive platform for expanding their brand's reach. If we're getting big licenses in this game, other big license holders could see Dead by Daylight as the key for engaging with a wider audience of fans and gamers alike. And even though Netflix did terminate the contract with Behavior, I think that Behavior would partner up again because it's big money and it's what the people want. Now, a lot of people, myself included, were expecting Friday the 13th to be Chapter 29. It truly surprised me that it wasn't. I don't think this means that Jason will never come to DVD, but just that the deal wasn't lined up for Chapter 29. The timeline and theory for it seemed pretty good. On Instagram, Leaks DVD posted the Alien teaser trailer and someone mentioned that they thought it was going to be Jason. Leaks DVD said, I can assure you there's now currently a license holder that could bring the chance of a Friday the 13th chapter in DVD. So I think Jason is possible for the future. I don't think that Jason makes sense for a licensed paragraph chapter though. I think as of right now, the front runners for chapter 30 are pretty clear. Let me know which license you think is most likely and why in the comments below. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel if you like what you saw here today. I'm also live on Twitch right now streaming Dead by Daylight. Link for that in the description below. That does it for this video. Goodbye.